Okay, so welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna finish up setting setting up our project. Um, because I actually forgot to mention a couple things. So first of all, this is the prettier configuration that I'm using. Um, you're welcome to use your own. But I believe the original project scaffold only has these first two lines. And then you'll also notice that the scaffold doesn't supply us with a git ignore file. So we should create one really quick. So the three things you need to remember to use is your operating system, which I'm using Mac OS. And <clears throat> your backend language is, for this is gonna be Node. And then finally, your text editor. Visual Studio Code, creates, copy, and then Let's just make a git ignore file. There we go. And just copy and paste. So <clears throat> with that out of the way, you can finally do a git init and create your initial commit. So git status should give us everything except for node modules. And of course, git add everything, get commit, your initial commit. Alright, so with all that out of the way, let's uh, finally, um, um, let's actually give this app a go, so you want to start dev, then some logging will happen and right now it doesn't tell us the port which we should definitely fix but it's currently at port 3000 so let's just go to localhost port 3000 and it has the hello world <clears throat> that comes with the project um so first i think i'm gonna add um let's clear this really quick I'm gonna add in <coughs> um, .env so that we could access our environment variables. Do, do, do. Touch.env and we'll just, <coughs> we'll just add in a port number here. And I'm actually gonna go with 4000 because <clears throat> React runs on port 3000 by default, and Angular runs on port 42,000, or, or 4200, I mean. So 4000 is a good middle ground. Um, you can also go with 8080. That's the, the default Linux server port. Um, yeah, but with that out of the way, let's... Uh, Add in dot env and at the top dot in slash config <clears throat> and then I'm gonna put the port variable right here. So port equals to process dot in dot port or eighty eighty. And then finally, we just do an app.listen port. <clears throat> and we also want to log out um, onto the console what port it's on. And Nest.js has its own logger, uh, which is why if you do a yarn start dev, <clears throat> all of this is this logging here is provided by Nest.js. So we'll just use theirs. So let me see, I'm trying to remember what it's called. Logger.log. And we're just gonna do server started or running on HTTP slash slash local host. And then interpolate the port here and there 
The Next.js logger also allows us to provide a context, which is what we see here. So Nest Factory, Instance Loader. It gives us a little more control and info on where the logs are running from. So this is the bootstrap function. So we'll just call it bootstrap. And there it is. The last line is the log that we just created. Bootstrap, server running on localhost 4000. If we just open this up, and there it is. And on 3000, it's no longer running here, so it should be bad. OK, so the next thing we need is um, we need to install our database connection. So let's see if it's in here yet. It isn't. So what we need is the database um, driver. So PG is for Postgres. There's also MySQL if you're using that. And then our um, ORM is going to be Typeform. And then also the Nest.js, uh, what's it called? Package for Typeform. And those are the three things we need. So install. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, so I think the next step we should take is actually creating that database. So let's open a Postgres. Uh, open Postgres. Um, actually, I don't want to do this. Let's just go into the command line. PSQL dash U for user Postgres. And we're going to create database. And just call it ideas, I guess, for now. Remember the semicolon. Connect to ideas. And it should be empty. So <clears throat> if we describe all the tables, there should be no relations. All right, Q to quit. Now we just need to create a orm config file. So touch orm config.json. And that's going to be right here. All right, OK. So normally you would copy and paste this. Um, <clears throat> I have it open on another tab right now. So I can just uh, type it in. But it's going to be of type Postgres, because that's the database that we're using. Uh, it could be MySQL or what other databases are there right now? Um, well, whichever one you end up choosing. And host is going to be localhost, because we're going to be running it on our machine locally. Uh, Postgres's default port is 5432. It's easy to remember. Username, this is your database username. So it's going to be Postgres. Uh, password, it's not very secure, but I'm going to go with no password at the moment. Uh, you can set up a password, just um, I don't feel like it. <laughs> uh, yeah. The database, this is the the name that we just created, so it's ideas. And then <clears throat> some options. So synchronize, I'm going to set to true. Uh, this is basically allowing us to always synchronize the data shape uh, whenever we make an update. So it's, it's like a migration, except it's a little more automated. And logging. Of course, to be true, because I want to see everything. And then finally, entities. Uh, it's actually going to be an array. So uh, this uh, field registers all the, the data models that we're coding, and it's going to synchronize it into our database. 
So we actually need two. Um, in should I do dot slash? Yeah. Uh, so in source, we're gonna check for any files that looks like this. So if it ends with dot entity dot TypeScript, then it's gonna register it into the database. But we also need to make sure that our our compiled code is also um, taken care of as well. Entity dot js. So regardless of TypeScript or JavaScript, it's gonna register the database code into <coughs> our database. So that should be good for now. Um, so let's see. And then the last thing we need to do in to get everything connected is to go to app module. Let's make a space here really quick. And we're gonna import from oops at nestjs slash um, was it typeform and it's going to be called the type or module but we also have to add in for root so it knows that this module is in the root of our application um, as a side note this is how in angular and also in nest.js how you're able to pass in variables to your modules okay if we save and then run our application again. You'll do 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 do. Huh. I must have missed something. Let's see. Type arm dependencies initialized. Logging true. That's odd. Huh, weird. All right, uh, I'm just gonna ignore that for now. Uh, but let us create our first entity. So we're just gonna make a directory inside of source for ideas. And normally, whenever I make a, a server, I usually like to modularize based on a type, so models, controllers, and all of that. However, Nest.js and also Angular encourages directories to be groupings of an entity or a thing or a component, whatever you want to call it. So we're just gonna follow that and we're gonna do idea.entity dot uh, I'm also gonna rename this so it's singular. Okay, so import from type orm and uh, let's go really quick. All right, so this is going to be an entity. Entity export class idea entity. And we'll just do the normal stuff. So primary generated column of type UUID. So what we're doing right now is just um, creating our data model. So an idea is going to have an ID of the type UUID in the database, but in our code it's going to be a, of type string. And then we also need a column that's going to be type text uh, for the idea, as well as a column, also type text, for description description 
and see. Uh, we also need some metadata, so let's uh, let's add a generated date. What was it? Ge date primary date create. Oh, there it is. Create date column, and we'll just do the created date here. Um, do, 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 do I need something else? No, I think that's all we need, so let's just save. Clear, yarn, uh, start dev. Okay, so it's definitely happening, but it's not logging. Why is that? Um... Oh. Oh, that's why. These are supposed to be booleans, not strings. Okay. That was, uh, that was pretty dumb. Do I have to restart the app? Oh, no, there it is. So, here we go. So, all of this is the logs related to our database. Um, so starts transaction, select star for current schema, and does all this stuff. Um, all you need to know is that this is creating in our database this um, column, or not column, the, what is this called, a schema? Or table, okay, yeah, yeah. it's creating the idea table. Uh, I'm actually gonna change this to idea. So our table name is gonna be idea, but our entity is gonna be called idea entity. Um, just an important distinction right there. And then if we go into, I'm gonna quit just to make sure it doesn't break stuff. Uh, if we go into Postgres, PSQL here, Postgres, and connect to our idea. Oh, right, ideas with an S and do a describe tables, we will now see that idea and idea, I uh, don't know, to actually delete that. Let's, uh, uh, what is that? Drop table idea entity. There we go. So this is what you should see. Um, there's a table called ideas. If we select from actually is it this one describe idea there we go so now we have all of our types so the ID is of type UUID created is gonna be a timestamp without the time zone um, default is now of course idea and description are all both text all right so we have everything that we need to start creating the app. I think the next video we're going to just do the CRUD applications for ideas. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Actually, before I do that, let's uh, try to get into the habit of um, committing our code. It commit and uh, let's What's a good message? Um, set up database and environment variables. All right. And if you have this hooked up to a Git GitHub repository, you do a git push origin master. I don't, but yep. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.